Hi, uh, my name is Slava and I'd like to demonstrate a, a signaling system that I built for my uh, model railroad. Uh, I wanted to build something custom uh, and make sure I can use uh, you know, custom uh, signals that I build also myself out of uh, inexpensive parts. So here's the board you can see below. Uh, I can connect different types of sensors to this board. Uh, those sensors would be sensor that uh, senses uh, direction of the switch, uh, sensors that sense the current of the uh, track, and also I have photo sensors. So currently uh, I have these boards and uh, it can be connected to up to 12 different sensors. And in this particular setup, I have it connected to uh, eight uh, switches, two current sensors and two photo sensors. Since uh, uh, the, the board senses the current of the switch to determine direction, I can uh, change the switch position by hand or using the switch motor. But for the purpose of this demo, I didn't want to be in front of the camera throwing the switches, so I decided to uh, use remote control to change the switch position. So, as you can see, for example, on the left, we have one track which is uh, green and the one in the middle is uh, red because of the uh, switch position so let me throw you know one of the switches and see how the light changes let me try that so i can throw the switch and based on the position of the switch you can see the lights uh, change on the left two signals Uh, also, uh, you can see the uh, uh, signal in the middle that basically for uh, the traffic that uh, goes uh, right to the left. And uh, I decided to use uh, two aspect signals on my railroad and pretty much semantic would be green is uh, the, the track open ahead and continues on the main, red meaning that the track is occupied in front, or uh, there is no route in terms of the switch positions. And uh, red and green meaning that the track is open but you're coming off the main. So you see that uh, big, uh, you know, a tall signal in the middle. So currently it's red, but if I switch it to go to the main position, uh, to the main lane, uh, let me check. It becomes green. And if I throw it so the train would go into the you know, middle lane on the left, it will be red and green, meaning that the track is open, and, uh, but it is coming off the main. So on the left side of the layout, uh, uh, you know, kind of here, uh, I have a current sensor. So if basically the, the state of the light is also determined by the switch position and whether the track is occupied or not. So if I drive this uh, green loco uh, through the switch to the track, I mean the light should change to the red because the track is occupied. Track will become occupied. Oops, it went into the wrong ground. Let me move it back. You can change that switch. Let me try again. <clears throat> and once it goes into the detection area, light will become gray, uh, red. So for that current detection and the photo sensor detectors, I have a timeout. Basically, when it becomes you know, unoccupied or sensors off, it still maintains that state for some period of time. And the period of time is adjustable from the half a second to about 75 seconds. So let me do the trick, like the train went other direction and left the track. And in a few seconds, it should become uh, green again. Hello?
Okay, here it comes. Uh, I have a, a potentiometer installed on the board that pretty much control the timeout. As I said, the timeout for each sensor can be adjustable from half a second to uh, 75 seconds. So here's a current detector and usually on the on the plane, uh, uh, so I use current detection uh, to detect uh, where the train is pre present on the station, but on the places where the train goes uh, over the main lane or when it go gets into the main, I use a photo sensor. And here I'll show you an example of the center fo fo photo sensor. Uh, watch this train number 63 on the left, or oh, you, you can't see it yet. But let me make sure I, I give, give him a green light in terms of switches. Okay. And here it comes. And once it crosses the photo sensor after the switch, the light will become red. Here it is. And after about 20 seconds, I think that's what I configured for this demo, so it's not too long. It will become green again. Okay, here it goes. Now watch that uh, yellow uh, yellow uh, locomotives uh, in the front. So right now it stands on the main and the signal is green. But if I throw the switch so it goes off the main to the uh, like a staging track, the light will be uh, red and uh, red, red, red and green. Let me try that. So here, if it goes to the staging track, and here the main is clear and it can go to the main, and if I if it goes past the uh, photo sensor, uh, photo sensor, the light again will turn into red for some period of time. Here it comes. Okay, so I think you got the idea. Again, I have a uh, switch sensors, photo sensors, and the current section sensor detections are incorporated into this board. And let me give you the close look uh, what it looks like. If I can pull off my iPhone. Okay, here it comes. So here's a board that I designed and uh, built. I ordered custom PCBs uh, for the circuit. So here you can see the uh, connector for the track detection. And this is another connector for the uh, detection of the track voltage. And this is a connector uh, for the sensors. And on the right side, you see a bunch of the connectors uh, for LED outputs. I used, um, I designed this board to work with uh, 10 milliamps uh, LEDs, and I use inexpensive uh, Bachmann signals, and I install three, milli three millimeters LEDs that takes only 10 uh, milliamps. And for those little guys, uh, I bought the plastic part on the bay for about a dollar. So this. Thing assembled the tall signal is about under three dollars and a, a small one is uh, under two dollars uh, part you know the labors whatever um, here's a, what a, a photo sensor looks like uh, basically I, I, I build a, a very tiny bit of the PCD and I mounted a um, photo sensor on it this is HO so you get the idea and let me pull this up I haven't fixed it yet so this is how it looks Here's a PCB with a photo sensor on top, and I used uh, basically I card that hole and I used router bit to clean this up to make sure that it's positioned straight. And you know it's a reflective photo sensor, so it has to uh, throw the light and get the reflection back. So here's a photo sensor, and for the current detection, the current detectors I used standard NCE. I think it's BD20 current detector uh, that. Uh, I mount it and I build a special pad, here it is, to make sure I can mount it more conveniently. So the board itself I mean, can be configured to be 
connected to 12 photo sensors or 12 switches but I saved some parts because you know for this group I don't need to have a sensors I only use uh, you know switch detectors here I also only use switch detectors I don't need sensors and for this group I use sensors but I don't need a switch detector uh, connector uh, and I don't need that circuit and also here's a uh, potentiometers that uh, adjust the delay and I only use this for the photo and the current sensor I obviously don't need this circuit for switches so I didn't need to put those parts in so again here's the board uh, that's pretty much it I hope you, you know, like this video and uh, this uh, single board right now drives six heads you can see this is one two three four five and uh, there's a sixth one that didn't get into the picture basically that shows me position of the track and uh, I have some spare PCBs that I ordered more than I needed so if you like what you see I can sell some PCBs extra that I have the boards and you can assemble it yourself and uh, this is the pretty much the logic to convert analog to digital these are pretty much uh, here the amplifiers for the LED and this circuit is a programmable uh, simple logic device that I would have to program in order to I would have to program to uh, the boolean function in order to get the output uh, I want depending on the input of the signals so to customize to get uh, the, you know the lights you want uh, you would have to program the function boolean function into into this circuit before you plug this in into the board and uh, here here is an example I don't know if you can see it well with the file uh, that uh, you need to write down in order to program the boolean function it's pretty much straightforward so in this section you can see that you know green on L next to switch 42 is when switch 42 is not thrown and the switch 16 is thrown or optical detector on a switch 16 you know is off and here are all the boolean expression for different lights and then pretty much I assign them to outputs output 1 to 3 to 10 then you compile this program into the chip and you get the function you want also I want to mention that uh, I have 10 outputs but in addition to the outputs for the first eight signals I also have inverse so for example if you want to run the signal which is either red or green you don't need to use two outputs for that you can just use one and invert so for example like you can use output 7 and minus 7 which is will be opposite of the 7 and you can use this to output to drive the single head anyway I guess it's confusing but if you want to hear more if you like what you see you know, feel free to shoot me email and as I said I have a few boards extra that I can sell and provide some instruction how to build it so you can have something similar to yourself uh, email is slava.kuznetsov at gmail.com okay thanks for watching uh, this is my first video on YouTube so I guess it wasn't perfect but I tried anyway thank you for your time bye